Okay, we're here live in New York City. This is theCUBE, a special presentation. This is the wrap up of a special broadcast of theCUBE, Silicon Angle, Vicky Bonds, exclusive coverage of HP's Moonshot announcement. Uh, we're here to extract a signal from the noise. We're here, we were here all day at the announcement, following the webcast, breaking down all the analysis, talking to all the special guests, all the executives, John and Dave, hitting them up with the questions, and now here to review and break down and conclude this special broadcast. We have Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org and Stu Miniman of Wikibon.org, who's in the house as well. Guys, let's uh, uh, quickly moderate this through. I'll moderate this, guys. I want to get your opinion. As analysts, obviously, we've been covering this, uh, and you guys have been, we've been covering the HP uh, moonshots at the beginning, as well as other initiatives around this. Um, I want to get your take and start with Dave. Um, your take of today and summary, what do you think would happen? Yeah, well, I think, again, uh, HP is the leader in servers, and they've just put down, thrown down the gauntlet and said, this is our new server platform. Uh, um, I actually got a little heat you know, from people saying that uh, this is ultimately going to eat blades, and there's no question in my mind it is. It, HP is going to slot in virtually every type of processor into this new format, and they're going to drive lower power, better packaging, greater flexibility, you know, better workload tuning. This is the future of HP server platform. Uh, there's no question in my mind about it. I think they were very careful at the original HP Moonshot launch because they didn't want to, you know, cannibalize their existing business. That's a messaging optical issue, yeah. though. That's not so much. It was just more they don't want to focus on that, but that's the reality. No, it's true, and 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 because they have to be careful because they got to ramp this thing up, and they've still got existing product to sell, and you know, so you know that's that's the the balancing act that they have to play. But I think the gloves are off, and and they're going for it, and they're going to you know transition to this new environment now. I think it's obviously not going to happen overnight. They're going to start with these specialized workloads. But I'm, you know, reasonably impressed with the the ecosystem partners that they have here. These guys are actually building. No, they're, the real, they're the real you deal. Know. They have the real deal. And they let's face it. We saw them on the cube today. They, every one of the ecosystem partners had a prop. They were showing the the capabilities, and you know, they want to be next in line to be able to participate in this new market. So those are all good good fundamental trends. I think the question is, how far into the hyperscale market can HP go? Um, is HP really, truly you know, going to compete and, and grab share there, or is this more about trickling a little bit into the hyperscale market and bringing that capability or proxy for that capability into the traditional enterprise? And I think initially it's more the latter than it is really driving the hyperscale market. Stu Miniman of Wikibon, obviously, you, you, know, you know a little bit about a converged infrastructure. Um, you've been covering it for a long time. Previous in your career at UNC, Office of the CTO, you know what's going on with, under the hood, down lower in the stack. Um, what's your take on the announcement? Obviously, you, you've been following some of the silicon that they've been partnering with and some of the software, and Intel's got some other Atom announcements. What's your take, yeah. and then just what's your analysis? So, 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 John, I think similar to what Dave said, you know, HP really knows that enterprise market. They were first with the x86, and if you look at some of these, these trends, like uh, so, so software-defined networking, uh, and where they're uh, bringing these hyperscale solutions in, mm -hmm. it is tied more to the enterprise. So, uh, while most uh, of the SDN players out there are looking for those service providers, providers in, in the big web scale companies, HP is trying to hit the enterprise market because that's where they live today. So uh, the question is, can they really crack some of those big accounts? Uh, we were a little surprised to see Intel as the strong partner here, and we said if, if you know, HP really wanted to take that moonshot further and go after some of these newer applications, you know, maybe it should be ARM. And of course, ARM's here as a partner. We expect many of those solutions to come in the second half of this year, but Intel and might well, be HP, safe. So HP has a relationship with Intel going back many, many generations of computer industry, right? So maybe it's impression there. Yeah, I understand, but if we talk about taking the, you know, mobile platform and bringing it to this you new generation, ARM. Intel is not a major player. Yeah. ARM is the player. Yeah. David Floyer wrote that, you know, Intel in big trouble if you David look at Florida, the trend. Wikibon, don't, yeah. yeah, of course, our CTO from from yeah. Wikibon, you know, has written a post saying if you look at this trend and if you look at people like Microsoft and, and Apple, if they port to ARM, you know, Intel's in trouble. So, it, you know, it's good for Intel to be here, Premier's, uh, you know, partner with HP. They've got a long relationship. They've got the Atom. They just uh, announced their next generation chip uh, of Atom uh, that they're, they're pushing here. But, uh, you know, if this is a true pivot point, might it be something other than Intel? So, uh, I exciting technologies, definitely so some, some things changing in the market. So, let me ask you, too. Obviously, we, you know, we know Nasir. We've been, we had uh, Martine on the Cube at VMworld. Software defined networking is very geeky. There's a lot of specific things that define what in open flow and on SD, software defined networking. They're positioning this as software defined servers. Obviously, the loose definition, I want to get your take on that. I mean, not necessarily a bad thing, but you know, they got to be careful not to, to get step in the hype factor here. They could 
you know, there is some good stuff that we drilled that down in the queue, but I want to get your take on that. Obviously, software-defined networking purists are saying, whoa, whoa, this is not software-defined anything. So, so I think that the, the change that we need in the industry is rather than taking general processors and trying to over-optimize and have my people and software trying to make things fit the application. If you look at what Facebook is doing with open compute, they are saying, well, here's the kind of five to ten models, and that's what we're doing. Now, Moonshot's doing something different. It's starting with the application. It's really d hyper designing those for the environment. So software is leading uh, what's happening. But uh, I'm not sure if it's software defined. Uh, there's lots of flexibility in the way Moonshot's built. Lots of different cartridges that can go in. And uh, through the software, we can manage and change and optimize what's going on here. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I, I'm. I'm not sold on software-defined servers uh, as, as a story there, but uh, it, it's still early, and uh, that, that's just market tech. Well, the, so the, I mean, you know, the, the fact is that nobody's really doing software-defined. I mean, the true hyperscale uh, guys are doing software-defined, but, but you know, everybody's talking software-defined on the, on, the, on the enterprise side. I mean, there are some examples, you know, you have certain file systems that are doing scale out, but in general, you know, none of the big whales are really driving it. I mean, I mean you've seen some, some pre-announcements, but John, what's your take on all this? Um, on what, Moonshot and HP's positioning? And yeah, all this? yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's an amazing move for HP. Obviously, they have a lot of expertise in servers. I think one, you know, one of the things that they were trying to do in the webcast, which I kind of didn't like because this made me kind of yawn a little bit, but they, Donatelli went back and was like, oh yeah, we did the Unix servers. And it was kind of a historical walk down memory lane. Um, HP has got a boatload of expertise in the server business. This is no question about it. So for them to make this shift over to this way is not groping for a market. They definitely have the chops in the server space. So, you know, super impressed by that. And I think Wall Street is all is all wet on HP. And I think that's why everyone was watching the the webcast. I think smart money knows HP is not only well beyond a turnaround relative to this area, um, but they have a chance to pull it off. So that's that's kind of my take on that. The other thing that I find really super interesting, Dave, is that the marketplace of software defined meaning. The world of Flash, what Flash memory is doing, and Linux kernels, software developers, guys who have a computer science degree, whether it's low-level programming down to the to the hardware level, or just LAMP stack developers, these guys are powering the next generation sets of solutions from software to service to platforms of service. So the cloud market, the mobile market, are developing huge amounts of developer expertise, and those developers are the key to success. And the infrastructure has been lagging behind. You've seen that fumbling of the cloud, and what Amazon has done is like absolutely taken that market share. Amazon.com went from what I used to call a junkyard for cloud, build your own, has now grown up with RightScale and others, to have a really, really compelling, obviously public cloud, but they are aggressively, incredibly getting into the enterprise through shadow IT day. We've talked about this. Amazon is absolutely kicking some serious butt right now, and I think everyone's on notice, and I think that is driving a lot of change because they are the infrastructure for mobile, they're also the infrastructure for a lot of you know developers. So you know the issue with Amazon is people are afraid of Amazon. Enterprise customers are afraid of Amazon, and Amazon's got competition. So I think it's an exciting time. I think this is a good move for HP. I think it's going to be one of those things that's going to make or break the company because I think, again, I think it's a solid bet because of their expertise. So I look at that. Yeah, so John, and w one of the things we've been tracking, you talked about converged infrastructure. The, the thing that will move converged infrastructure from evolutionary to truly revolutionary is that programmability and scale out as really the architecture that it's built on. Typical to converge infrastructure are not really built for scale out and they're not programmable. They're more of a black box solutions, solutions like yeah. uh, Nutanix, uh, a little bit what IBM's trying to do with pure systems, and now Moonshot do take that next step to truly make a scale out architecture that has some programmable features. You know, you know features. Dave, Stu, I, I think you're totally right on that one. I think Wikibon has the most research out there, just a little prop to you guys. But Dave and I have talked to some of the top executives, including a Fusion IO violin and other Flash guys, uh, Viridin and others, and you have as well. Scale out open source absolutely is the, is the game right now, and I don't care what anyone says, I'm completely convinced I'm seeing too many data points. Scale up commercial software is slowly and quickly eroding, and you're gonna see Oracle out there, all these guys out there, EMC, HP, IBM, all the traditional vendors, Dave, love to get your take on this, have lived a great life, very prosperous life, selling gear on a stand up vertically, you know, scale up infrastructure with commercial software licenses. VMware, Pat Gelsinger, he's, he's, he's not someone who's a stranger to this marketplace. He's moving off the licensing with the hypervisor, moving quickly to different value activities. So, so clearly, scale out commodity or industry standard hardware 
is the game of every cycle. One of our guests today said you got a disk drive and then you got you know a NASA's 10x uh, 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 or yeah yeah 10x and then a, a, a scan is like a hundred x and I'm not sure his math was quite right, but but the the point that you're making is is a good one. For years, server and storage vendors and networking vendors have been marking up commodity components. Now they've done that on the basis of hey you know those commodity components that you buy at Fry's aren't enterprise ready, we make them enterprise ready. Well, how do they make them enterprise ready? They make it through software. The problem is they've done that through, not really software, but through middleware that's tightly embedded and integrated with the hardware and doesn't really scale well. And this whole notion of software defined and the scale out business and the hyperscale is all about commoditizing that infrastructure. I mean, again, Jeff Hammerbarker's statement about I was just sick when I was at Facebook of putting all this money into the container. And so the idea is if you can make the hardware as standard as possible and as low cost and defrilled as possible and add value through software, then you can drive business value through things like algorithms and processes and apply people to create more value. And that's where I think this industry is headed. So this is why I come back to HP. There's, I think they've got an excellent opportunity here to be a proxy for hyperscale in the traditional data center because the traditional data center is just not going to all go to the cloud. They're not going to disappear overnight. They need companies like HP and others to provide that level of infrastructure that allows them to partially replicate what the hyperscale guys are doing. I think Google and Facebook are harbingers of the future. I don't think they're outliers. Okay, Dave and Stu, I want to ask final question as we wrap up the day. Kind of just get your thoughts together um, around what you think is really happening, but, but while you're doing that, I want to ask you a quick question on the front end of that is, Davis Stu, obviously HP, this is not the first time I asked Jim Gonthier, this is not the first time they've done something compelling from a tech announcement standpoint. I mean, there's a, HP launched some pretty amazing technology products that ended up into a cul-de-sac of no market. Um, obviously this market is a market opportunity with low power and high performance. So the question is, good market opportunity. They still got competition. How do they pull it off? Talk about the execution. What does HP need to do to uh, to do this? Let's answer that question, and then let's wrap up your thoughts for the event. Well, I think the first, I mean, they have positioned, you know, initially around these these edge applications, and I think they got to pick those off um, and and deliver. Uh, number one, number two is they've got to continue to enable other, you know, players. I mean, having Intel, you know, as the the the, the mainstay for the initial system is interesting but I think it's much more interesting if we can get some of these other ecosystem suppliers in here. Now we saw those guys today. It's, to me, it's you gotta start shipping those. Third is you've gotta have that software infrastructure built up around it. Um, it takes a company like HP to actually provide you know, that level of leadership. And so those are really the three things that I'm looking for in terms of uh, seeing how successful this is gonna be, and I think they've got a great shot at it. Stu, yeah. so what do you think about the execution that they have to do? So, D Dave, you, you mentioned some of those early applications. If, you, if we look at big data, if we look at the government, these are relatively low margin environments, uh, and there's a lot of specialization required. Uh, one of the real concerns that if we look at HP is only 3% of their revenues today is done with software. So they really have to build that ecosystem and rely on that ecosystem, and how much of the ecosystem is going to say, okay, I, I want to go with HP. So they have to up their game on software. Yeah, absolutely. And this is so the software defined <laughs> server, we've had to see some software. Love the quote from the AMD guy, software turns on the hardware. Everything's software defined. So, um, okay, final packaging of this event. Dave, I want you to wrap this thing up uh, for the folks. Summarize uh, real quickly your thoughts, impressions, and what do you think is going to happen post uh, post this announcement? Well, John, I think you know I'm I'm honored that we were here at the original Moonshot announcement outside Bill and Dave's office, and and that HP you know allowed us to come in and independently report on what's going on here at uh, at, at uh, the Moonshot announcement. And so I think that we are seeing uh, a major change, a major shift in server infrastructure. I think it's it's very consistent with the hyperscale trends. We've been we've been covering this uh, again. What we cover at Wikibon and Silicon Angle, it's big data and it's software led infrastructure. Those are the two big giant trends that are being driven by cloud, mobile, social, big data. I mean, everybody's sort of hopping on that, but underneath it, that nuanced piece really is what's happening in the hyperscale with infrastructure and what's happening with software-led infrastructure on top of it, uh, really to drive new levels of value. So I'm very excited to see how this thing uh, progresses, and as I say, I think HP's got a really excellent shot at uh, making it happen. Stu, anything to add? 
No? I, I think Dave summed it up real well. Uh, it, it's still, John, as you said, early innings uh, for, no, for this technology. Nothing to add at this point? Okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, big announcements <laughs> expected in the second half as the partner goes from kind of one solution to lots of options and, uh, you know, well, lots we'll of Well, Stu, we'll be looking for your analysis. Obviously, we know that, you know, you're in the lower end of the stack relative to some of the things going on in converged infrastructure. You were putting out some of the best research early on with David Floyer on this area. We'll watch you. Um, my take on kind of the wrap up here is, I think what's interesting is, obviously it's, I've sort of said my thoughts on how I feel about the announcement, I think it's a home run. Ridiculously amazing numbers on, air, on the energy savings. That alone should just, tsunami of, of units will go out the door on that one point. But the software defined piece, the software led, the compatibility with the future architecture of how people are gonna build software, I think is really gonna be the key that, no, that everyone's overlooking. The other thing that I will say, Dave and Stu, is that I'm really surprised that Intel's got the lead position here on the announcement, and I think, What's exciting is HP's not picking uh, winners here. They're just probably because of their relationship with Intel and their performance with Atom. But look, if you look at the other ecosystem partners, it's a jump ball in my mind. I don't think there's any decision at this point. I think this product's going to be so compelling that TI, ARM, everyone else is going to have a, a, a horse in this in this, uh, in this this game, Dave. And, and I think there's plenty of courses. So there's a lot of fertile ground for these <laughs> horses to run. You're going to have different tracks and different use cases. I think purpose-built custom solutions, I think. So I like that, that the ecosystem's got a lot of vendors in there that are going to be building product. And I think it's still going to be a jump ball. I want to add one more thing. I mean, companies uh, in this business, in the enterprise business, need to figure out how to make money at, at low cost with, with lower margins. And that's something that HP has you know, always been done pretty well at. And I think that um, it's going to be really interesting to see how others respond. And I think software-led is uh, is one way, but there's a lot of talk about that. I want to see more put money people put their money with them out, uh, money with them out there. So. Well, that's going to be a wrap for us here for this special edition for the Cube. Uh, long day, excellent day with HP. Again, a lot of competition still out there. See what they can do with it. I want to thank Dave Vellante, Stu Miniman for uh, helping us out here at the Cube, as well as uh, Kenny and uh, Mick out there with on the on the on the. On the, on the board, appreciate it. And all the folks that are back home at SiliconANGLE pumping out those stories, Mark Risen Hopkins, Kristen Nicole, uh, Mike Wheatley and the whole team, uh, great job. And also thank HP for um, supporting us to come out here and be part of their great launch. SiliconANGLE's independent coverage of this event. Uh, we're continuing to do more free research at wikibon.org. Go to wikibon.org and look for, to me, the most seminal research on software-led infrastructure. We're calling it software-led, mainly because we believe it's not yet defined and networking, servers, storage, they're converged, they're converging fast, it's software-based, and HP's product fits right into the wheelhouse of some of the things we're talking about. And obviously, Jeff Kelly with Big Data, check out his new report, he's leading the market. And go to siliconangle.com as for the reference point for tech innovation, covering the latest in emerging technologies and the data center and the enterprise. And uh, we're excited to be here, and uh, that's gonna be a wrap for theCUBE. Thanks guys, appreciate it, and we'll see you next time. Look for SiliconANGLE, Wikibon's theCUBE at the next event.